for a short period of time after radio, I did a syndicated TV show called uh, Head Shop. From Hollywood, this is Headshot, the only show of its kind on television, exploring your music, your people, and the world around you. Here's your man, Elliot Mintz. Hi, welcome to Headshot. I've been looking forward to doing this head shop for quite some time now. I think you're going to have a good time this evening. My very special guest on this evening's program, Jack Garris. Jack Garris is one of the designers, one of the inventors, one of the pioneers of the instrument that you see behind me. It's called a bioscope, and it's an instrument used in the measuring of brain waves. It's become an extraordinary meditative tool and indeed one of the more revolutionary activities going on in our country. We're going to talk about biofeedback today and demonstrate the instrument for you. Jack Garris, besides being one of my dearest friends in the whole world, is probably the smartest man I know. If not that, he certainly is the most well-read human being on all of the subjects of uh, metaphysics and comparative religion and philosophy and, and the like. He is my ultimate uh, expert on all of those things. And he always hates those kinds of introductions. Welcome to Head Shop. Nothing quite so disastrous. You didn't call him expert, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to just spend time today, Jack, talking about biofeedback and the bioscope. I thought just before we begun to kind of give people some degree of insight into your life, what is the quest all about? I mean, meditation, bioscopes, religion, God, what, what is this constant driving force that man has? Have you ever been able to isolate it? Well, if you think for a moment uh, just about the word meditate, which is sort of a Western word, <laughs> but meditate comes from the same ancient uh, Greek word as medicine. Does it? So I... to care for, or another way of saying it is perhaps to, to heal yourself, to become whole, a kind of integration of self and thereby uh, reflecting a, a harmonious integration of the universe. Ah. The whole, the holy, it's all the same thing. A kind of coalescing, then, a kind of bringing together? Yeah, you know, the, the kind of realization that you're, not, uh, that you're not an alien in the hostile universe, you know? That the universe grew you, that this is part of it, that you are, that just like an apple tree uh, grows apples, so the universe grows you, and, and how great, you know? How marvelous. It's beautiful imagery. What's biofeedback? What is all this stuff about? I think perhaps the best way of approaching it, so that uh, otherwise it seems, you know, too, uh, too mysterious, the best way of approaching it is simply this, that when they took measurements, physiological measurements, of Zen masters in meditation, they found that instead of, you know, a 30-minute period seemingly of passive, just sitting, it was a whole eruption going on. It was as though the microcosmic universe of, of that individual was just, you know, creating all over the place. They found that, for example, brain waves, there are various types of brain waves, but they found that the so-called alpha brain wave, which is sort of the, the energy signature of, of, of serenity, they found that this appeared with Zen masters in meditation. Hmm. It appeared in this 30-minute meditation. It grew. Uh, in, uh, in height, the, the, the height of the wave, it slowed down. It was as though suddenly there was a, a tidal wave in slow motion happening within the, the brain, within the mind of the Zen master. <coughs> then there were other changes too. But the exciting thing is that we are able to tune right into our own mind. It's like the old Zen masters of China used to say, a direct reflection of the mind. And you are able to tell, indeed, if you are in alpha and how to, to increase alpha, how to sensitize yourself to the subjective states that alpha represents. It's a whole new you know, evolution, revolution in consciousness. So if I might capsule, 
uh, they found with uh, these monks in a state of meditation that when they put themselves into that blissful state, something physiologically yeah. occurred within the head to a part of their brain. Right. And biofeedback is using an instrument to allow you to be aware of that physiological change. That's right. Recognizing that, you know, there is no division, uh, the, the wholeness, the, the totality, the oneness of an individual. No difference between mind and body. So that it is a, a total reflection. I see. Okay. Uh, good. That's, that's an excellent way of setting it up. When we uh, return next, let's okay. discuss how this instrument does that and how we might be able to utilize okay. it. Fine. With Jack Harris on Headshot. Okay, we return now uh, to our conversation with uh, Jack Garris. Okay, so what we uh, have, Jack, is an instrument that is capable of measuring these responses in people's heads. How does it do it? Amplifying. In other words, in a very real way, it's just like a telescope that reflects the outer universe, or like a microscope that, that reflects microcosmic uh, space. So the, the bioscope, or biofeedback reflects your own inner space and it does it by a series of amplifications it's amplifies oh something like 500,000 times you know there's such this the brain waves are such tiny bits of energy of electrical energy this magnifies it and then tells you where you're at in other words the activity that takes place in the brain when you change your mood from bliss to danger to happiness to pleasure is ma is enlarged 500,000 times. times. Yes, yes. So, what happens? Are, are things connected to the head? Uh, electrodes are placed on the head, depending upon what area of the, of the, uh, of the, of the brain that you want to, uh, to, to amplify. And uh, they're just pl placed on with paste. There are no needle electrodes. They're just placed on top. Then they pick up the, this, uh, the, the, the brain activity. It uh, amplifies it sends it through here and you can then tell uh, how high an amplitude that you're doing uh, amplitude think of, of, of waves coming into the ocean uh, coming into the shore and the amplitude would be like feet you know like how many how high are the waves and their different effects and then it's brought in here you either hear uh, through sound the warble of the actual brain wave itself amplified huh. uh, or you may see it in light uh, there are different lights for different uh, brainwave patterns. So, again, just to, to sure. capsulize, when this action takes place in the brain, it goes through the instrument, mm -hmm. and the actual sound, of, physiologically, of, of the alpha moving is heard and seen by yeah. the subject. Yes. Good. And then that's, you're tuning in. It's a real mirror to yourself. You know where you're at. In, in, again, it isn't that you're controlling brain waves, but it's that brain waves are, are energy signatures of certain subjective states, and this tells you what subjective, uh, the, the type or the, 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 the boundaries of the subjective states. I see. Okay, in our next segment with Jack, we're going to discuss what all that can do for you on Head Shop after this. When we last left off in our discussion, Jack, we had arrived at the point where we are now aware of how the machine or the instrument shows you where, when your alphas are activated. Instrument, not machine. <laughs> instrument. And tell them why you make that distinction, because it's interesting. Well, machine is mechanical. Uh, instrument is uh, an extension of your own perception, like a microscope, like a telescope, like uh, any, you know, any fine instrument which allows you to see further than your normal senses would take you. A machine, you sort of think of, you know, Charlie Chaplin, clamp, 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 you know. <laughs> um, so people will now say, to what end? For what purpose? What shall it do? I think that the, if you insist upon having an end, <laughs> and not just allowing things to be as they are, I think that if there is indeed an end, it's the end of, of what every meditative tradition uh, aspires for, a greater awareness, a greater awareness of self, uh, an interrelation of self, uh, and thereby uh, a greater awareness of others, and eventually a greater awareness of, of, of the universe and your relationship to it. 
In a moment, uh, we're going to uh, hook the instrument up to my head and, and see what, what we can do, if anything. Uh, just before we do that, tell us about some of the areas where biofeedback is now being used around the country. People would be interested in that, I think. Well, biofeedback is more than just meditation. There is biofeedback as it's being used for medical purposes. In what capacity? Uh, well, for example, heart uh, problems. Controlling the beats. You actually uh, can learn to slow down the heart hmm. through feedback. This is, I wouldn't recommend for lay people, but this would be under medical supervision. Right. Or um, they are actually uh, beginning, to, I think, the, the possibility exists that you may train people out of, of epilepsy. Train people to control themselves so yes. they won't have epileptic seizures. Yes. Tension headaches. Tension headaches. You know, there's, you know, that terrible gathering of tension that sometimes happens here in the front of the head or in the back of the head. They're actually working now at Colorado Medical uh, University School to train people through feedback, through muscle feedback, how to relax so completely that they completely, they dissolve the tension headaches. Migraine headaches, they're working with that. So there's a whole medical area. Then there's a therapy area for biofeedback. Uh, using, well, teaching one, for example, to relax and then encounter whatever uh, material has, uh, you know, disturbed you in a relaxed state. It's called desensitization. Marvelous. We'll pause and, and when we return, perhaps <clears throat> we'll try it out. It predated MTV. It was, you know, no big deal, but... Um I don't know, I think I did a hundred of them, uh, interviewed rock stars and uh, played their music and we did little videotapes or movies of people around the city. It predated MTV, I'm not suggesting that I was um, spearheading that experience, but uh, it was my introduction to television.